Hi, and welcome back. Mid-side matrix sounds quite complicated and advanced, right? It's a good phrase to drop into a sentence when you want to impress someone with your technical knowledge. It's not so complicated, really, though. Let's write some code to do it using Reaper's JS programming environment. I'll create a variable called mid, then equals. And now I want the left channel added to the right channel. So I'll type SPL, short for sample, then zero, because computers count from zero. And that gives us the first channel input. Plus, SPL1 gives us the second channel input, then a semicolon to end the line. OK, now a variable called side, which needs to equal the left channel minus the right channel. So SPL0 minus SPL1. Great, now let's write those mid and side values back to the first two audio channels to replace the original signals. SPL0 equals mid, semicolon. SPL1 equals side, semicolon. That should be it, right? OK, let's write the corresponding decoder. This time I'll create a variable called left, which needs to equal mid plus side. So SPL0 plus SPL1. Don't forget the semicolon. And a variable called right, which needs to equal mid minus side. So SPL0 minus SPL1. And we'll write those values back to the input pins for the next plugin in the chain. SPL0 equals left. SPL1 equals right. Notice anything about those two bits of code? They're the same. Apart from the variable names, of course, which doesn't matter. We're adding and subtracting the two input channels either way. There's a problem, however. When I run this code on my audio, everything gets much louder. What have we done wrong? Let's look back at the encoder. We've derived the mid channel by adding the left and right together because it's just the mono sum, right? But what people often forget about the mono sum is you also need to divide the result by two. Otherwise, your mix bus would clip as soon as you press the mono button. And we need to do the same for the sides so the relative levels don't change. Now I can toggle both these plugins on and off and nothing changes. Except, of course, anything in between will be processing mid and side instead of left and right. However, there was something curiously satisfying about the encoder and decoder being identical. We could still do that, actually. If I divide by the square root of 2 instead, then I can do the same again for the decoder stage, and overall we'll still be applying the same amount of gain. So I could have just one single mid-side plugin which I would run two copies of either side of the plugin in question. As intellectually satisfying as this is, however, it's not ideal, as the mid channel is only attenuated by 3 dB in between the plugins. It leaves the possibility that it will clip, even if the left and right channels didn't, which might matter in some situations. So I prefer to abandon the elegance of the single unified encoder decoder and solve a different problem instead. I want to talk about normal stereo width. I don't know if there's an official definition of this, but in my experience, from recording stereo pairs of microphones and analyzing mixes and references, a normal stereo width will have the side channel roughly 6 dB lower than the mid channel. That doesn't have to mean it sounds narrow. If the low frequencies are mono, but everything else is nice and wide, that can easily create that much difference. Now let's imagine you're using a stereo saturation or distortion plugin without any option to run it mid-side instead of left and right. Why would it offer that option, you ask? I'll demonstrate with FabFilter Saturn, which does provide that option. Let's start in left-right stereo mode. The input signal is a sine wave panned hard left, plus another sine wave tuned a semitone higher and panned hard right. When I push these sine waves hard into the heavy saturation algorithm, they start to turn into square waves, and they each get a full set of odd harmonics. OK, now let's switch to mid-side mode. Now those two sine waves are being distorted together and intermodulating 
to create some indifference partials as well. Switch back to normal stereo, it's just two square waves again. It's not the same, is it? Let's try with the full mix. Definitely sounds different in mid-side mode, right? So perhaps the question should be, why would any stereo distortion or saturation plugin not offer this option? No problem then, just put it inside a mid-side matrix. But if I use the stock one, or something like MSED from Voxengo, the sides channel is going to end up significantly cleaner than the mid, being lower in level. So here's an alternative approach. In my encoder plugin, I'm going to gain compensate the mid channel by dividing by two, but not the side channel. And in the decoder plugin, I'll divide the side channel by two, but not the mid channel. And now, in effect, the side channel in between the two is boosted 6 dB in level. I find this approach works very well for saturation and distortion effects, and can also be handy for mid-side compression. Although most of the time I prefer to have separate controls in that case, so I'll probably use two instances of the compressor rather than just one with unlinked gain reduction. It's a tiny little difference, but I mention it for a couple of reasons. Many people aren't aware that mid-side saturation sounds so different, and I want to encourage people to try it, and developers to add the option to their distortion plugins. But also many people aren't aware that mid-side matrixing is so simple and pleasingly elegant. And if you're a Reaper user, and you'd like to have my MS matrix code, and you're too lazy to type it out yourself, you'll find it in the description, ready to copy and paste into a text file, like your other JS plugins. That's all. Thanks for watching. <laughs>